Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon. So, uh, uh, you know, very uh, warm welcome to everybody to our cath lab. Dr. M.G. Pillai, uh, sir, uh, is over here. Dr. Charan Reddy, uh, my colleague cardiologist. Right. So what we'll do is we'll just present the brief history of the patient, and then I will go directly on the radial uh, system demonstration that how to access the radial easily through a 7 French if we want to use for complex intervention 7 French, so how to do it. So let's go to the uh, clinical present, uh, presentation. Dr. Charan will present it, and then we'll go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'll be presenting the short history of the patient. Can you put the PPT? Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is a 59 year old male, a known case of diabetes hypertension in the past 15 years, presented to us with a history of resonance chest pain since the last yeah. three days. 2000 apparent. Uh, the ECG was done, was suggestive of uh, evolved anterior wall MI. Today, course showed hypokinesi of the anterior wall with an EF of 35%. So, we did the CAG, which showed critical uh, triple vessel disease. And uh, so, we'll show you the angiography also. Next one, please. So angio. we'll discuss the angio. Uh, uh, I think we can show the angio right now. Yeah. So can you please show the angio images? So, so these are the angio images. And if you look at the angiography, there is a CTO which we can see, left, uh, the OM CTO, and which is filling uh, 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 retrogradely via collaterals. Please keep running. Please keep running. Please. And uh, yeah, so just uh, stop this. So there's a LED which is, we'll show you in the uh, LED diagonal view. If you can look at that uh, diagonal which is coming out, please go a little back, yeah. So there's a tight diagonal lesion at the, uh, uh, it's a bifurcation lesion. Go to the next view, PA cranial view. PA cranial view, please. Okay. Yes. So there is a recent, it looks like a recent total occlusion. There is some uh, filling retrogradely uh, of this uh, LED, but uh, the diagonal appears significant only in the, uh, uh, the spider view where it looks very tight and uh, show the RCA so this is the RCA which is again uh, very tight so it's a critical TVD and uh, with a recent uh, evolved interval am I presented as more of as an angina and he came on in the OPD where we admitted him and did his angiography so uh, I think we can uh, so uh, we can discuss the issues if we want or otherwise we can uh, our idea is to uh, you know access this uh, uh, LED through the uh, left system to the seven French system because there's a bifurcation and there is a CTO. So we'll see how we have to address all these issues. But let us first focus on the, uh, the railway system, which makes uh, things quite easier whenever we are doing a seven French access because we all know that uh, the radial artery uh, diameter may not be in 50% of the pati uh, patients, Indian patient, the radial artery is not uh, actually uh, sufficient to take the uh, even the six French uh, diameter catheter and when we try to insert the sheath uh, they can go into radial artery uh, spasm and a uh, lot of issues and when we talk about the seven French access it definitely uh, uh, you know uh, difficult to the radial access so uh, I think we will just uh, show you this uh, railway system demonstration we can go side by side PPT also if uh, it is possible so this is the ra railway system and there are two dilators which come uh, along with it. There is a uh, uh, there is a O21 uh, uh, wire uh, related hole which we can see uh, through the. If we want to do a uh, ad hoc, we, we want to do directly angioplasty. We can directly access the uh, system through this. And then we have the O35 compatible uh, uh, the uh, the dilator which is done when we are doing an ad hoc angioplasty. So there are three uh, places where we can use this railway system. One is when we want to, uh, you know, use a small bore access directly, uh, uh, you know, we want to do the angioplasty directly where we know the patient. Otherwise, uh, we want to uh, increase our uh, size of the guiding catheter so we can actually, uh, uh, you know, take a f do an angio with a five French uh, catheter and then uh, change it to the seven French. So. Uh, and the third part is to facilitate tracing. So sometimes if it is a tortuous artery, this railway system is really helpful. I found it quite useful <laughs> while tracing into a tortuous artery anatomy also, and we can easily access with the, the thing. So let us go with the procedure. So we will uh, be intervening. I think uh, we can discuss the issue and then we can also discuss. You can <coughs> take the, uh, this thing. Yeah. You can small comment, if you are using a six French guiding, you need not give a nick on the skin with the puncture needle or the, the six French or five French catheter uh, yeah. delivery system itself can go through that. Without so, that, uh, uh, yeah. Rahul, yes. uh, the package has uh, both of the things, but actually what we were suggesting to decrease the 
uh, make it separate so that cost could come down significantly in our country because cost is a challenge. Yes, now yes. One is an exchange device if you have to change and do ad hoc. Other is you can, which you can do directly. Yes. So probably if it can be separated also, cost could decrease significantly. I think I agree with your viewpoint. I agree, totally agree with your viewpoint. So uh, now what, what uh, just for the sake of convenience, what we had done is not to waste the time in the radial puncture during the live case. We have already taken a five French uh, access of our patient. And uh, we will demonstrate that how to insert this uh, catheter. Yeah, I think uh, slides can be removed. Uh, you can make your thing uh, bigger. Because yes, yes. Slide is not there. Yeah. Yeah, please. So uh, this is that uh, O35 access uh, catheter. So we will first uh, flush it, uh, flush it fast. And then once we flush it and uh, activate the hydrophilic coating, then we can, uh, we always please have show to. Show their hands, not the coronary angiofloro figure. Uh, they show their hands. Can you uh, please focus uh, the camera on the, uh, uh, the uh, yeah. yeah. Can you show so it fully? Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we are just, uh, you know, uh, we have access. Just give me the this thing. So we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, activated the hydrophilic coating, just did the uh, uh, flushing of the catheter. And what we are going to do is, we have to always uh, uh, load it from the back side. So the hydrophilic coating is in the front. We are doing it, and this is the reason for doing this is that we don't want to disturb this hydrophilic coating as well as, uh, you know, we want uh, don't want to damage the tip. So this is how we go back. The so I'm. The taper is always on the front, and the blunt is always behind. So, so we are uh, going behind. There are two markers, one for the 90 centimeter guide, and so we can see the two uh, markers which are there. And uh, so we will go with uh, these markers. So I'm just loading this. Uh, system from behind there's no need to put a wire before you do that in the guide yeah so i don't have to put the wire i have to because i'm going to put the wire now into my uh, thing uh, five french uh, system which i have taken can you focus on the radial mm -hmm. artery so this is the five okay. french uh, radial i've already taken and once i have removed the uh, the five french sheath i'm going to uh, you know insert this uh, so let's do that uh, uh, the, the yeah so we are we are pulling it till the time we get this uh, black, uh, marker black marker here. This is a hundred centimeter guide. So this is the first marker which is seen. So we have taken this out, and our system is ready to be inserted now. Dr. Pillay sir is now cannulating the uh, you know just wiring the uh, radial uh, through the five French. Uh, uh, we have to take a double length wire whenever we are exchanging like this. So this is a double length wire, and uh, we'll remove the sheath and insert this system, and then we are ready to go. Yep. And uh, yeah, because he's exchanging, now they are using the double length wire. But if you do directly, probably you can. Uh, yeah. So if we are, put that yeah, special yes. wire which comes with this, so that you can directly. What is uh, previous lecture? They have shown it. The wire yeah. can be put in, and uh, you can directly so, take this. So from yeah. The so wire. there are two systems which are there now. This is for the ad hoc one where we already have the five French sheath. Otherwise, yes. uh, if as you are rightly saying that uh, we have this uh, system, and it is very very uh, user friendly, very easy to use. Once we see this, I think it is uh, it, it's quite easy. You can do it at the first go. There's nothing technically very difficult. So there is a, a rapid exchange port where we can uh, do that. Can you push a little bit? No, yeah. What push. we find, Raul, is uh, as Pilaster was mentioning, when you're doing it directly, not this ad hoc way, yeah. uh, it is better to give a good nick there at the site because sometimes that uh, over the wire to get the, ca the bigger catheter in it could trouble and the yeah. catheter could get damaged. Probably good nick. Good nick is, is yeah. Important. Can you just push this? Push? No, no, not push this. Push the uh, this thing. It has to be in the front. Yeah, and just hold the wire. Don't uh, hold. Don't pin the catheter. So this is how we have gone. Just uh, just one minute. Okay. So this is only yeah. Um. So. Uh, I think uh, radial, if we are able to see, oh. we are now entering. So let us go ahead. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Dr. Rahul, um, good, good afternoon here from Germany. Uh, yes. So what I see, you are to twice, uh, you are double guys at the table of three, three doctors. And uh, so it's a long wire. And uh, so can you do this if you are alone? Or do you need some somebody who can uh, who will help no, you? No, only our staff nurse is sufficient. This is just for the live case purpose. We are three of us over here. But otherwise, uh, I've been routinely doing it alone uh, with my uh, staff nurse uh, who is there to assist me. It is not but that difficult. So it is quite. But you definitely need somebody. Uh, yeah, we wire. need somebody. Uh, we need somebody to have these uh, uh, wire. now. We are just yeah. uh, going uh, above, so we are. I am with the dilator as well as the guiding. I am going both. You, you yeah. 
Dr. Pillai you can, is... You uh, can show the fluoro screen now. No, can they're... you show the fluoro, please? Sir, could you take the wire a little bit back? Yeah. yeah. So I am, till the subclavian, I am uh, going with the dilator as well as, because dilator is also helping me to track the guiding. You don't need it, but uh, it can help you in tracking. And then you can remove just the, uh, the dilator. So now I'm removing the dilator because my guiding has reached till the subclavian. So Dr. Pillai will remove it and then I can just move ahead with the, okay. Um. Dr. Rahul, just for me to understand, so with this very long sheet, you, uh, our dilatator system, you, you have, you make a smoother transfer for your guiding catheter, or do you um, avoid spasms? Uh, what, yeah, what so, uh, so the, uh, the most important thing is the outer diameter of a five French sheet is the, uh, you know, is the uh, diameter of the, this, uh, uh, this guiding, seven French guiding. And the most important reason which has been found for uh, the uh, radial artery spasm and difficulty is when we use a higher uh, size, uh, the, the sheath which causes the artery to uh, get into spasm and then it becomes very difficult for it to be uh, cannulated. So this is the advantage which we get uh, while we are... Uh, would, would, would you if be... If show the radial site, you know, sir, there is no sheath there. It's directly only the guide now. No, it's a sheathless. Yeah. Yeah. It's a sheathless thing. If we so can... Just can let show? them focus on the radial uh, site once. If the camera can focus, then people will understand. Yeah. What yeah. is the difference? Actually, this uh, this dilator when you use, it reduces the razor effect of the guide. It smooths yes. the transition between the guide and the dilator. Yeah. Yes. So you don't have the razor effect of the guide, which would injure the radial artery. That's the advantage of using this dilator inside the guide. Okay. No, otherwise, uh, as you said, the injury will happen. The dilator is mandatory. That is, that is what is the railway catheter actually. Uh, yeah, that is why. Right. So, Dr. Ferenek wanted to understand the benefit of using this dilator inside. So I think that's the transition between the guide catheter that's and fine. the dilator yeah. that even becomes reduced. Yeah. So, so that reduces the razor effect. No. So you when, you're, when you're doing the direct uh, puncture, that means not exchanging it, then you can't take the dilator yeah, uh, beyond a certain yeah, length because the exit port of the wire is within few centimeters. So there you would insert the guide and then uh, put a normal guide wire. In this situation, you have the option of taking the dilator right up to subclavian or you can remove it earlier and put your normal dilator. Yeah, so okay. when we are doing the uh, direct uh, plasti, direct puncture, so what we do is, now I'll just describe the direct puncture technique as well. So we go directly as we are taking the radial sheet. There is a wire which is available, uh, uh, the O21 wire, over which then we, uh, you know, feed the waste, the same way the dilator has been fed and then there is a... Uh, the uh, you know the rapid exchange port and we go through the uh, uh, go into the uh, the radial artery then we remove the wire o5 o3 o21 wire and we just pin the uh, the dilator we slide the guiding and then we can give our heparin and the uh, in the cocktail uh, to prevent spasm and then we can just go with the normal wire and uh, normal length wire and we can uh, directly access the so uh, I think you, uh, have, you also you also don't necessarily need to use the two one wire in the kit. You can use the same wire that you have been using for your normal radial function. Yeah, yeah, exactly, it, exactly. It yeah, yeah. Wire. No, it is the one which is available with it. So I'm just describing yeah. the kit, but we can use Vartil, it. Sir, what we have noticed, if you are using the regular wire, no, sometimes the support uh, is a problem. This wire which is there in the uh, set is more st more supportive, more stiffer. And, yeah, it has. Uh, yeah, a wire enters, the guide enters easily into the radial artery compared to regular wire what we thought. Yeah, because when you're using the a first, thermo, thermo first sheet, wire, the to, to enter the soft. radial artery after the needle puncture, it is Only much easier with the routine smaller wire, with the thinner you, wire that Matt? we use. So from that point of view, it is better to use the stand, the what wire that it? we have been used to. Uh, in some situations where you think it's difficult to push it, then it, you can choose the 2 one wire. But most of the times to enter the radial artery, it's much easier to use the wire that we are used to in so many cases. Yeah, entry is easy, yeah. but the only thing is sometimes when you are trying to introduce the railway catheter over that wire, there is a difficulty in entering, uh, the probably better nick should be given so as to enter. Yeah, I, I agree, I agree with uh, Dr. Srinivas, I think if you have to uh, use your own wire, you can actually use the puncture wire that you normally use then push the cannula forward and change it to the 
wire that comes in this uh, in this railway yeah. uh, system so that has a steel portion you know where it is yeah. entering the skin so you can give a better nick that's important to give a nick because you're directly going to take the guide in after the this so i think uh, we are uh, some of the camera probably was not able to focus on the hand on the radial portion of the hand mm. there is only now the guide there is yeah no there is only the guide and it's quite uh, uh, you know all right and the patient is quite comfortable is busy so, with that uh, i think if we are uh, done if we, there is any no more doubt about the railway system uh, if anybody else uh, can we if uh, any thoughts about the angiogram and the approach uh, which we or uh, which anybody wants to suggest the so regular thing is uh, now what we wanted to demonstrate is doing a bifurcation through this uh, system that will right. be seven french in the radial right the plan is probably you can do bifurcation because that is a culprit vessel right uh, if it is okay with you then uh, shall we go to pune and come back to you yeah that will be okay. fine uh, meanwhile we'll work on the uh, left system yeah. and then we can any yeah. any questions ragu or anybody to on this we are trying to do a study with this uh, railway catheter system through foundation involving yes, many sir. of the uh, young uh, radial operators too uh where we can avoid uh, going to femoral uh, use even using the seven french system and we are in the process of finalizing that with cardis and cardinal i uh, hope uh, it will come through uh, we have done some left mains we have done some bifurcations with the system through uh, but what they claim uh, rahul is generally they say it is a two french uh, yeah. better but definitely one french one french lesser we can say six, six instead of six seven can go Yeah. but uh, to put a eight with this i think uh, slightly may be challenging but we need to have more experience yes. i think with this uh, if no further comments or questions on I, this I, particular I actually system. have two comments here one is yeah. one is that dr akul yeah, he is a radial artery size dr ferank uh, is uh, one of the oldest operators now he has displayed from the distal uh, radial we'll technique also oh balloon. balloon please go ahead sanjay yeah so the the two comments i had was one is that the radial artery size dr atul actually really quoted loud. for indians uh, as being 2.3 but in our data of thousands of patients the average radial size in in the indian population that we studied and published is 1.7 in females and 1.8 in males at the the upper limit is usually around 2 so i think this kind of a system a is, is uh, actually yeah. useful we have to use 7 french or even 6 french and the other point is that we have actually found a higher number of radial artery occlusions uh, using this railway system so i think once we have a larger study if we have a randomized study then we might be able to have a clearer idea of that because uh, most of these radial occlusion data based on experience is probably not based on ultrasonic assessment of occlusions because we looked at ultrasound ass uh, assessment of occlusions yeah, uh, just immediately after and 30 days later and we found a higher incidence a pretty high incidence radial occlu occlusion almost like 18% so i think uh, just because you are able to use a bigger size does not guarantee that you would have a patent radial artery at the end so i think we need a larger study before we comment on that but personal experience has been that the incidence is higher because probably we are stretching the smaller arteries a lot more when we use a sheetless system and use a seven french or even a six french in many of the arteries because the average artery is pretty small 1.7 1.8 in the indian population dr sanjay are you using the same amount of heparin or are you upscaling <coughs> up, uh, upscaling the heparin dosage in this when you are using this sheetless systems same is this is the same dose i mean you would you would use the same dose uh, as you would do for angioplasty i think uh, sanjay sir as you understand when you are putting a bigger size uh, catheter obviously that we need to be more we careful and there could be more chance of occlusion as you said we need to have larger data and now can you uh, ujwal can you switch us to vidabansa yeah, to pune we'll come back later here again yeah can you hear us yeah yeah you yeah, we can see and hear you go ahead yeah so we went ahead wired the led uh, not with difficulty oh. but just a balloon support uh, the diagonal was a little bit difficult but uh, we were able to negotiate it i've just taken the oct mild dilatation with 2.20 uh, balloon uh, uh, i think it's a recent total occlusion so nothing this thing we were trying to uh, we have taken the oct image if we can just focus on the oct we are still not interpreted yet uh, we did, just we finished we can't see the wiring can you just show those floral pictures once before we go to oct uh, can you uh, go few scenes behind can you go okay, few scenes already behind already there it's okay go ahead yeah, we are already there with the wires if you can show this 
Now this is before this, before this, before this, before this, before this. So these are all uh, pre-dilatation. So the the LED wire went with little next, next, next. Yeah, with balloon support only. Then it went easily. Then next. Yeah. So the LED, this the picture of uh, the wiring of diagonal is not there, but it was slightly uh, you know difficult, but uh, we managed it. Then this is the pre-dilatation with a 2O balloon. Uh, show the picture. Next picture. Next. Did you feel anything different uh, with this uh, railway system uh, which you use without sheath uh, no, compared to the previous? Uh, the uh, I think this is quite uh, comfortable okay. in doing it. Uh, you know that sometimes if the skin nick is not good, and you can feel resistance yes. in manipulating the guide. So that's what we have to take care. But otherwise, yes. it's fine. That's what my experience is. So here we are. And uh, can you run the show the OCT image if uh, everybody can see the OCT? Can can you switch to can the OCT? So this uh, wire tends to uh, go into that diagonal. We are trying to negotiate, but just for the want of time, we have kept it. Anyways, we are not going to come over there. It's gone into one of the diagonals. Uh, you know, it, it, every time we have to change the shape. We have not done that because uh, of the time. Uh, this is the OCT image, I think. Can you see the OCT image? Yes. So, uh, so these are, uh, you know, the. OCT images, we'll just take the dim diameters and all. But I think the plan looks uh, simple as of now. Uh, you know, can you go to that diagonal area where we can, if we can see the, it's, uh, you know, the ostium. ostium of the diagonal? Actually, we didn't see the angio picture before we, well, if you get no, people will have better orientation. One, yeah, uh, when, uh, open. Uh, when OCT, you have taken a picture with angio, that uh, to save the contrast, if you have not taken a picture while so taking OCT, yeah, we have the picture of the uh, NGO any, which are there. Anyone and then show this. Okay. So can you show, show the? You want to show the NGO? Uh, see the NGO pictures? We can just show you. Yeah, you once, first. once the yeah. final uh, before well, OCT also while doing it, you get an NGO picture. Yeah. So the so plan is to see where to start the stent and where to end. Yeah. So you can you show to the NGO pictures? Go to the NGO. And uh, Dr. Rahul, do we have an NGO core registration? Now, yes, we NGO have. core registration is there, but because this is uh, connected to the uh, live uh, say thing, we can't, uh, uh, you know, just the NGO co correlation doesn't happen when we have the live case because the input has been taken, output has been taken for that. Dr. Okay. Dr. Sengoto, if you look at the angiogram, it is a tapering LED from soon after its origin. So I think we have to keep the diameter of the proximal LED in your mind. And if you look at the uh, angiogram during the OCT, the mid LED is quite good sized. There is probably much more disease in the uh, origin of diagonal and thereafter. So we will appropriately select a stent in a few seconds after looking at the diameter on the OCT. Okay. Yeah. Dekho na, measurement karo na. Distal, distal diameter. Just check, uh, Charan, just yes, check, yes. take the diameters. Uh, meanwhile, if this goes into. Go down. Yeah, go down, go down. Yes. This is a picture. Yeah. Just so show the OCT picture again. Can you show the OCT picture on the shift to the OCT thing? No, so this is the. the, the can you go in the. Prog just run it and go to the proximal area, take the. I think you may have to negotiate it a little no, down. No, we have gone down now into the LED. It could be recanalized LED. Okay, so. Uh, Another important thing is probably we should treat it with nitroglycerin before each picture, yeah. especially when this occluded vessel which is opened up. It right. right. Now we have given a nitroglycerin mm -hmm. as well as NTG just now. Yeah. Yeah. Just take the proximal thing. There's a diseased it's all diseased all throughout go go proximally go, go proximally. proximally go proximally further come 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 further come further come back come back, come back. Come back. all disease segment come back, come back. Come back. that's circumflex yeah yeah so basically a diffusely diseased LED, there is no, uh, you know, those three layers can be seen completely any of the site, but we'll choose the site which is of the, uh, you know, the, the back, least plaque burden. Come back. So back. Come back. 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 Proximal, proximal proximally. 
Bus. I think this bus, uh, bus. diagonal uh, probably will not trouble. Although, can you go to the um, uh, one of the spider views where uh, we had a very tight looking uh, diagonal? What's the diameter of the three three point one? Three three point one. Three point one. Yeah, this one. This one. This one. Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah, stop it. Can you go to the floor? We'll just show. We, I think we'll take a picture right now in this uh, view. Can we go to the spider? We'll take a picture because in the spider view, the diagonal looked pretty tight. But uh, we'll, we'll just, uh, now after opening the LED, we'll just see that picture and decide whether we need to do something about the... Off the spine, please. Hello, two. And camera to the As they are uh, taking those, uh, Jabir, would you comment on uh, what is your uh, policy of selection of diameter with OCT? Unlike I was, uh, we take intima to intima. Here, what do you go from media to media? Yeah, the problem is we are not seeing the EEL correctly. And it's a, can we make it a little bigger screen? It's a little difficult to see it. But if yeah, we can... Can you it, yeah, make the screen bigger? So uh, avoid this only, Jabir. We made it uh, projected on the bigger screens on the PVR cinemas. People are enjoying there. Only we, in the Zoom <laughs> platform, we are suffering. Right, the live, live stream viewers are seeing it on a very big screen. Very big. <laughs> right. We are, we, it's diffi a little bit difficult for us to see it well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, since we could measure a 3.1 at 3 millimeter stent, I think I'll put it, uh, go for a 3 millimeter stent. If it is the measurement that is the auto lumen measurement, uh, we can go a 0.25 millimeter higher size. I think we'll direct the. EL to EL, the maximum size of the stent can be diagonal. like EL to EL. Yeah. So we go for a quarter the... size or a 0.5 no. millimeter next size down. And what are your comments on distal vessel being smaller compared to the proximal vessel, which is bigger? Mm -hmm. So probably if you take the bigger uh, compared to the proximal segment, if you take, there's a chance of dissecting the distal we'll vessel. Always we'll, it's all based on the distal vessel diameter. It's, uh, no, the that's stent important. Size that also, that the also we need to diameter. mention. Yeah, that's no, what I was no, highlighting. Yeah. But also we need to mention, Very because tight. if you see only the proximal vessel, sometimes you could end up, though these later generation stents are very good and compliant, they adjust according to the diameter. But if you stretch it too much, probably edge dissections could happen. So that's and where yeah. I think the proximal and distal vessels are different, then probably you could select somewhere in between. Very low pressure. And then know. dilate proximally with a bigger size balloon. That is a normal routine approach. So we have taken the aleocardal view. If you can see this aleocardal view, the diagonal ostium is very tight. So, yes. uh, what what do you think? Uh, the diagonal is not very big. But Thank we you. We have master in bifurcation, uh, Ferenc, uh, who is a uh, principal investigator for BBC other trials. Uh, what is your approach, Ferenc? Uh, what we do normally is if a diagonal or a bianch has a tight stenosis, we tend to predilate to protect it. If there is no tight stenosis, we avoid doing predilatation. Do you agree with it, or what is your recommendation? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I would try to go with what very lower atmosphere. Two, three, four, four only. From yeah. my perspective, it's definitely necessary. That's it. That's it. Like gentle predilatation of the diagonal branch. Two point zero balloon, maybe ten atmospheres. We'll keep it for some time. Twelve atmospheres pressure, and then try to 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 get it open, and. Uh, concentrate then to the to the main branch so in this case i would definitely go uh, so we have done exactly the same uh, negative pv please so what we have done is the diagonal was quite tight 90 percent so we have just at low four atmosphere it has opened up well we'll see yeah. how it looks like in a picture and then if it is fine uh, i would just not do anything for the diagonal because the diameter wise the diagonal is not very big Go with right. the main vessel stenting and then see how the diagonal behaves and uh, maybe a provisional uh, uh, strategy just to you know open up these struts and all in case uh, it gets pinched significantly. So this is the picture uh, is better than before. Uh, the diagonal appears to have opened slightly better. Now we'll go with the stenting of the LED and, yeah. and uh, then we'll see how the diagonal behaves and uh, then accordingly act on it. Dr. Ferenc, in, uh, after your BBC to trial data showing that uh, uh, in the overlap of the portion, sometimes if you're doing a provisional stent or following a mini tap, there's more that. events happening in the branch uh, that showed that probably Gulat is better. Still Did you do any approach changed in two stent technique or uh, doing bifurcation or do you still follow the same? Ekdam niche jau. Distal jau. Ekdam distal jau. the same. Or so what, haan, what haan, we know? Pe. Ek or we or proximal leke ka. data to go with... Um, Provisional, so oh, this oh, is oh, oh, oh. Yeah, come, come, come. Yeah, yeah, from there. Oh. That's it, please. The provisional is fine, but two stents technique, you are reaching more under towards the uh, lot no. type uh, compared to Deceased. tap or mini tap. Or distal yeah. We, we distal have done a, a randomized study comparing tap Go further and further. 
but the data was definitely better for culotte for culotte uh, stenting uh, because with culotte stenting we have a fibrotic plaque come proximally more fish coverage uh, sorry distally 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 jo go distally distally you have impression distally. you are perfect but finally ah, you like check the lens up, you see there is um, some gap and um, uh, and um, again problem in in ostium of the side branch ah, so you know. you have usually so this is about uh, let's take uh, 2.75 38 so no distally kitne we prefer culotte play karo um, and tap ye yeah, view play karo uh, dr srinivas rahul, yeah. rahul, yes. rahul can you show your uh, angio you are taking apicranial view also or are you only watching on ld uh, no we have taken a apicranial view uh, show that apicranial view so the maximum yes. diameter it's all a uh, disease but it's a uh, stable plaque looks like in the proximal led uh, uh, fibrotic plaque and uh, i'll just take uh, for the uh, this thing i'll just take a small picture uh, so this is how the led looks like so my idea is uh, take the stent from uh, the uh, the just uh, below that lesion which we see the hazy looking lesion which was which is the culprit lesion okay. and take it to the uh, proximal site which looks slightly better so maybe uh, the length is coming about uh, 30 millimeters uh, on the uh, so we'll take a 30 millimeter uh, stent and uh, we'll take a 2.75 stent and then dilate it up to uh, 3 millimeter in the proximal part so that's the approach we'll repeat the we'll see how the diagonal behaves and then we'll work on the other vessels uh, meanwhile if you want to go to the other lab or if there is any other discussion point so give me a 2.7530 any any other comments, uh, Ferenc? Shall we go to Hiramath Center and come back finally here? Yeah? Give me the yeah. Onyx 2.7530. So this is where we place the stand. Uh, go ahead. Next slide. Uh, next. 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 We I rewired the diagonal again. After that, I did a post dilatation. Next. 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 Did a pot. Ah, uh, then these are the final pictures. So the diagonal is flowing very well. And uh, the uh, the stent, uh, the LED uh, results appears to be reasonably good. Uh, and these are the final pictures. So now we are going to work on the other vessels as we uh, will break from here. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Rahul, for yeah. effectively demonstrating the railway catheter system. Uh, all seven French can take in the radial artery. Yeah. Anyway, here the uh, diagonal LED were occluded before. Even if you have some suboptimal result in the diagonal, it looks okay. But uh, diagonal doesn't seem to be flowing as good as LED, but many times... Uh, we tend to accept it as long as the flow yeah, is maintained. But it looks like yeah. a MA1 2 nice. flow in the diagonal. Probably, if needed, you can uh, work on yeah. it. We'll uh, allow you to work in peace and uh, thank yes. you for effective demonstration. Yeah. Thank we'll you. Uh, thank break. You. Any final words you want to say before we break? No, I think it was uh, a nice uh, opportunity to be here with all of you. And, Pillai, uh, uh, sir, you want to thank say you. something? Yeah. No, um, we have effectively done this, treated this complex lesion as single. Stent okay. because we know the results are better without making provisional a, approach. Yes, provisional approach because the diagonal does not look very large by diameter as well as length. So we have decided to do that and we got a very good result. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so anyway, much you for your up guidance. You that by 7 French uh, railway system, but it was not, uh, it yeah. was fortunately, you are not needed to work on it. Thank you for effective demonstration. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. I am uh, Dr. A. Srinivas Kumar, uh, consultant cardiologist, director of cardiology and clinical research, Apollo Hospitals, Hyderabad. Uh, this video brings to you best wishes from Fax Foundation and TCT India South Asia 2021. Uh, in the part of our live case learning series, uh, now uh, we are about to bring to you another interesting case of uh, railway assisted uh, radial. Uh, mode uh, complex PCI and uh, demonstration uh, of a LED diagonal uh, bifurcation PCI through a railway catheter system using a 7 French uh, guide catheter and uh, this is uh, done by Dr. Rahul Gupta and Dr. Pillai sir from uh, Apollo Hospitals Mumbai. What we have learned uh, interestingly in, the, in this last case demonstration is basically uh, we learned the details of what is railway catheter and then uh, what are the various components present in the pack. As we see, there are two components of it. 
one is a, uh, for exchanging the guide uh, after in ad hoc PCIs or uh, once you've done a radial procedure with a regular uh, French 5 French cast sheets. The other one is uh, for a direct taxis uh, including uh, the radial railway catheter itself. So there are two components of it. One is a little thinner one, other is for the dilator one which is a bigger exchange catheter. Uh, also wire, uh, steel uh, wire comes with it uh, which can be used for direct axis puncture. Uh, if you are not comfortable using uh, that wire for puncture, probably a routine wire whatever you use to do radial puncture can be used and then put a dilator over it and thinner one and then exchange. Uh, then uh, change that wire to this uh, wire which comes in the railway catheter sheath. It is very important to use this stiffer stainless steel wire in the exchanging when you are uh, taking the railway catheter inside the radial artery because it gives adequate support and strength. Unlike the uh, very thin uh, radial axis wires or for that matter even the regular uh, wires which you use in lab uh, either uh, stainless steel or uh, thermo wires. So it is important for us to become comfortable with usage of this uh, thin stainless steel wire which comes in this package. And uh, it, th that is important for us to also give a good nick at the site of uh, entry in the radial artery. Uh, otherwise, uh, the catheter's tips could get uh, damaged. Uh, Rahul has also shown how to load this uh, railway catheter. Uh, from the behind uh, because the proximal uh, portion has a hydrophilic coating. So for the coating not to get disturbed, you backload this railway catheter in the whatever guide catheter you are planning to select. And then uh, the front portion of the railway catheter, once it's introduced over the stainless steel wire which it comes through, uh, there is a small port exit port uh, from which the wire comes out. And then uh, once the catheter gets into the uh, human body through the forearm, then probably that uh, thin wire is removed. And then the regular wire, uh, what we use uh, for guide exchange, either 3-2 uh, wire can be put from the back end of the guide and advanced it uh, up to maybe um, to the arch and then gradually thread this uh, using the dilator also. Uh, up to maybe forearm and then gradually you can stop uh, threading the dilator up and take the guide catheter regularly uh, like in any other guide uh, catheter introduction. This uh, helps us to avoid uh, the, ra the radial artery site is totally uh, without sheath and you have only directly a 7 French catheter going in mm -hmm. and uh, this will uh, prevent the trauma and the injury which gets uh, to the artery and that will be the outer diameter of the 5 French sheath would be equal to this uh, direct 7 French catheter what the company claims. And uh, uh, even if it is otherwise also the 6 French catheter sheathless insertion will be totally like a 5 French sheath. And then if it is a 7 French catheter maybe like a 6 French sheath which could be easily uh, tolerated uh, in our set of patients. And we also heard from uh, Dr. Rahul and from our experiences too that uh, the support issues shouldn't be there. If the nick is properly given, then probably the pain, other things would also be less uh, in the radial artery site. And then tortuosities also could be negotiated using this dilator which comes in front, which goes. And uh, there are advantages of uh, seven French catheter usage in the radial artery, which otherwise uh, wouldn't have been possible because the seven French catheter, the seven French sheath would actually produce eight French uh, damage in the radial artery. So all that aspects were very, very highlighted. And after that, uh, then uh, discussion was uh, with the Dr. Sanjay Chup sir mentioned, uh, in Indian scenarios, we have a smaller radial arteries and probably in females, the average ultrasound measured uh, arteries, what he mentioned was 1.7 and males is 1.8 and probably it could be stretched up to two millimeters. And then probably if you stretch it further, then probably there could be more chances of uh, radial artery occlusions on the follow-up. And uh, we also mentioned that uh, the, we are planning to conduct one study using the railway catheter access system versus uh, uh, checking uh, without that or with the femoral axis where we, we want to compare and see the complex PCA procedures like left main bifurcation PCA where we tend to require a bigger guide catheter. That's all about uh, this new interesting um, accessory 
uh, which uh, called is cardinal developed uh, for entry into the human body even the radial artery is very very small without producing more injury i think uh, with the five french catheter outer sheath types then the seven french uh, the guide catheters could be directly taken in and obviously as we are passing the more bigger catheters we need to be a little careful and also follow all the precautions uh, not to prevent uh, not cause problems to the radial artery on follow then after that uh, the next part of the case was uh, a recent anterior wall mi patient had a LED diagonal bifurcation type of disease and then uh, initially LED could be wired easily and the diagonal have uh, some negotiations went in and then LED diagonal uh, provisional stent approach was followed as initially ostial diagonal was dilated with small balloon and then uh, LED was stented and then uh, diagonal flow was maintained so that's how the provisional approach gave good result and uh, though we started a railway catheter seven french expecting that we could use two stent approach but finally it was not needed it took god's grace that patient had a good result and uh, uh, finally uh, the case uh, demonstration went well hope you all enjoyed uh, this uh, demonstration of the new accessory sheath which could uh, do good to this patients uh, when you are uh, doing the radial procedures even the complex procedures could be done uh, using the seven french catheter using the railway catheter system thank you viewers uh, dr ashish nawaz kumar